Kahalah Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Waha, Rakakwadash. In Hebrew, that's giving our praises to the Most High, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh. In the name of His only begotten Son, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh Shai, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, along with the Holy Spirit, who taught us His truth. Honor to the brethren that's laboring, doing the work to push the gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, which should be the one-third of the nation of Israel, the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians who make up the lost 12 tribes of Israel who return it back to the Most High during these final moments by hearing them, believing on his word so that he will have mercy on us in judgment. We back with another lesson to the power and spirit of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah. Lesson is going to be titled, The Land is as the Garden of Eden Before Them. And I've been thinking on this lesson for a minute on how to bring it out in the best way possible. I'm going to talk about some personal things in my life and things that my girl said. Not no, on no emotional crap, but you know, it's for the elect's sake. You know, he that is spiritual judge of all things. And Lord willing to be edifying you. <clears throat> so we're going to start with Job chapter 2 verse 3. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. This is concerning the nuclear missiles. Before means in front. And once in front of the nuclear missile, it's a nuclear warhead. It's a device that actually detonates and causes the destruction. So that's a fire that devoureth before them. The fire that will consume, destroy everything, and behind them, a flame burneth. That's the flame burning behind it. This flame is burning, but it's not a consuming fire. It doesn't destroy anything. And it reads, the land is as the Garden of Eden before them. And what's that land? It's America. How is America a Garden of Eden before the nuclear missiles hit? Well, Eden means paradise. So America is a paradise for the wicked. And as we continue, behind them, a desolate wilderness. So once the nuclear missiles get here, after the fact, this place gonna be a desolate wilderness. <clears throat> also too, uh, the Garden of Eden being a paradise, meaning what, it's never been touched. America's never been touched. But when she be touched by these nuclear missiles, it's gonna be a desolate wilderness. It says, yeah, nothing shall escape them. So that's that verse. But the focus here for this lesson is the land is as the Garden of Eden before them. Now, what else was going on in the Garden of Eden? You had a match made in hell. And what was that match? Eve and a serpent. Who would Eve be? The so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, and Seminole Indian woman. You know, especially the so-called... Uh, black and Mexican woman, you know, the women of the nation of Israel, they will be Eve and they got a relationship with the serpent just as in the Garden of Eden. But before we continue, I got a little video we're going to play real quick before we continue with the lesson. Divorce my husband. Why did I divorce my husband? I divorced my husband because I was making a certain amount of money. I divorced my husband because I thought I didn't need him anymore. I divorced my husband because I had this senior position at work and thought I held the same position at home. I divorced my husband because I thought I was better than him because I had my degree now. I divorced my husband because I thought a successful marriage meant I was here and he was down here. That is not success. That's fucking sickness. All the while, my husband done found somebody else building a, a relationship and building a life with them. So why did she divorce her husband? Pretty much, she had a relationship with the serpent. And I'm not saying a, a physical relationship, although that happens a lot, but a, a, a spiritual relationship, just as Eve had with the serpent. And how did Eve have a relationship with the serpent? Well, she acknowledged and honored the words of the serpent and let the words of the serpent come between her and her husband, Adam, and between her and the Most High. Because when the serpent deceived Eve, 
Eve went back and told Adam, you know, the Bible give us key points, you know, that wasn't a 30 second conversation between Eve and Adam as it is when we read it. You know, you can read it between the lines and, and, and assume that Eve was probably nagging Adam day to day, weeks, months, just like our women nag us today, you know, about the things of the world. And finally, Adam gave in. Then he consented to what Eve was taught or what she had learned from the serpent. And it caused Adam to transgress the words of the Heavenly Father. But she divorced her husband because Eve, once again, is honoring the words of the serpent, who is Esau Edom, the so-called white man. Now she says she divorced her husband <clears throat> because she had degrees, a certain level, a certain position at her job under the serpent, under Esau, and she thought that that same position or that same level she had under Esau applied at home. And for the women, whatever you got going on with the serpent at your job, your, your, whether you're a secretary, no matter how many degrees you got, no matter how high you rank up in a company, you can't bring that mess home. That got no business in your home. Also, too, um, why do women carry that work mentality? Why do they bring that home? Well, because they listen to the words of the serpent. Whenever Esau, the white man, tell them at work, these women, Eve, they bring that mess home and they let the words of the serpent come between them and their husband. And for the record, whatever a man speak to you outside of your home, speaking for you women, the words of another man shall have no place in your home. And that's what Eve did when she was dealing with the serpent. She went and brought that mess home to Adam. And, you know, Adam didn't break right away. He was saying, you know, Eve, you got to listen to the words of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. The Lord said, don't do this. Don't do this. We got to follow his commandment and not transgress his word. But after Eve being the woman that she is, even so today, after nagging him, hey, he finally gave in just, just to shut her up. Now it's his downfall. Now, we're going to... Read this again after we play this video. Divorce my husband. Why did I divorce my husband? I divorced my husband because I was making a certain amount of money. I divorced my husband because I thought I didn't need him anymore. I divorced my husband because I had this senior position at work and thought I held the same position at home. See, she said she thought she didn't need her husband. Because she held a certain position at work and thought she held that same position at home. Let's get Genesis 3 and 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye should not surely die. For God doth know that in the days ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So the serpent told Eve, you shall be as gods. Now let's rewind this was making a certain amount of money. I divorced my husband because I thought I didn't need him anymore. I divorced my husband because I had this senior position at work and thought I held the same position at home. So yeah, um, Eve here said she held a certain high ranking position at work and she thought she didn't need her husband. When you read in between the lines, this is what the serpent is telling Eve. So again, for God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods. That Eve will be as a god. And if Eve is as a god, she don't need her man that's above her. Also, this represents uh, going up in rank, elevation. So her being as a god, this is her being in a raised up position, just as this woman held a high-ranking position at work. She tried to bring that position home. And that's what the serpent was kicking to Eve here, that she could be on a higher level than she is now, and she could be above a man. She don't need her man. She could be as God himself. Then let's see what happened. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, food for thought, not literal fruit, 
and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise. See, that's how you know that it's not a literal fruit. Uh, the serpent was kicking some information to her that Eve ran with. She took the fruit, the fruit of lies, that false information, and did eat. And gave it to her husband, and he, with her, did eat. So you just know that Adam didn't eat right away, that there was a conflict going on between the two. But let's continue with this. And with, with, with the serpent, the white man was telling her at her job, she took it and ran with it. You know, she got full of herself and brung that mess home and let that mess get between her and her husband. Divorced my husband because I thought I was better than him because I had my degree now. Hey, <laughs> she said she thought she was better than him. Go back up to Genesis 3 and 5. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes should be open and you shall be as gods. So if Eve is as a god, she's better than a man. And what did she say? She thought she was better than her husband. Let's go back. Home. I divorced my husband because I thought I was better than him because I had my degree now. She said because she had her degree now. <clears throat> Let's go back down to verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise. So yeah, what the serpent was kicking to the eve back in the day is no different than what the white man who was the serpent is kicking to our women today. You get degrees, you get money, you don't need a man. You could be in control of your own life. You can be better than a man. And that's why it says in a tree to be desired to make one wise, you know, and what you get in Esau society, you get degrees, uh, certifications and all that stuff, stuff that will make you wise in his society. So again, in a tree desired to make one rise. So she thought she had these different degrees and certifications and thought she was better than her husband. So she ran off with it. I divorced my husband because I thought a successful marriage meant I was here and he was down here. See that? Pretty much she thought a successful marriage meant that she would be above her man. Go back up to verse 5. For Yahweh does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods. If Eve is as a God, that means she would be above a man because the most high is the head of the man, meaning the master. And then the man is the head of the woman, meaning the man is, the, is her master. So she was really trying to exile her master and be above him. Now, we're not going to just get on the women because men do this too. That's a feminine trait when you try to X out your head. When women try to supersede the man and X him out the picture, she thinks she could be better than them or above them. Hey, men do that too. When you try to X out your Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah. Pretty much when you reject this word and cleave to the words of the serpent. Because our men do the same thing. They get degrees, certifications, a certain level of wisdom in this world. Now they think they don't need Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. Hey, and that's a dangerous thing. But we're going to let this play all the way through again. And then we're going to move on between, you know, what I was mentioning earlier. Divorce my husband. Why did I divorce my husband? I divorced my husband because I was making a certain amount of money. I divorced my husband because I thought I didn't need him anymore. I divorced my husband because I had this senior position at work and thought I held the same position at home. I divorced my husband because I thought I was better than him because I had my degree now. I divorced my husband because I thought a successful marriage meant I was here and he was down here. That is not success. That's fucking sickness. Hey, she said her being above her man and thinking she better. Hey, that's not success. That's sickness. That's how you destroy your household. That's how you destroy your family. And that's what the serpent, the white man, has done to the so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, and Seminole Indian family. Empowered the woman to X out the man. Now we destroy, you know, as a people amongst uh, many other reasons. And when we read here, a tree desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband and with her and he did eat. Now that's a feminine thing 
um, when, when, when the man uh, take heed to the words of a woman that she got from the serpent. Other words, you know, reject the words of Yahweh by Shimmy Yahweh Shah. We're going to do what the serpent is kicking to us and we're going to level up in his society according to his word. Now, Adam eating as well is what many of our men do today. You know, Esau eat them or kick something to our women and then our men consent and play along with it. But what did we get earlier? What did we open up with? Joe 2 and 3. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, meaning that America would be a paradise before her destruction, but you had this relationship in the Garden of Eden between Eve and the serpent. And it was that relationship that was the downfall of Adam. And what's the downfall of Adam today? The downfall of the Israelite man, the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians. And when we go to the book of Ecclesiastes 1 and 10, is there anything whereof it may be said? See, this is new. <clears throat> so the relationship between Eve, our women, and the serpent, the white man, ain't nothing new. It had been already of old time, which was before us. So this is nothing new, the downfall of Adam, just as we see today, the downfall of the Israelite man because of Eve and the serpent, who was Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Now, back to what I was saying, that things that I heard my girl say, <clears throat> it wasn't nothing bad, but I think it'll be an edifying lesson. So she applied for a manager position at the job that we work at, you know, at this warehouse. And her current manager told her, you know, I think you will be a good manager, but there's things you need to work on. He said, first, you need to work on keeping your emotions in check. He said after that, that I'm, I'm kind of nervous for you to have to deal with Carlos, which is the, the general manager of the whole facility. Because in the manager meetings, um, the ops managers, the general managers, they real deal be cussing out the lower level managers. Like real deal curse words flying left and right. And every time there's a manager's meeting, you see the managers walk out of the meeting looking defeated. So he told her, I'm scared for you to have to deal with Carlos, you know, when he had his temper tantrums and he cussing out the managers, but also said you need to work on keeping your emotions in check at work. And that was the Edomite. Now the Edomite that told my girl that, which how I heard this, my girl talks on the phone to her friend and she was loud, so I couldn't help but hear, you know, not to put personal business out there. But I thought about the scriptures when I heard that, you know, and again, her, her manager, current manager is an Edomite that says she needs to keep her emotions in check. And he's scared for her to have to deal with Carlos, which the, the, the serpent, the Edomite manager she got now, he's absolutely right. But the thing is, I told my girl the same stuff over and over, you know, she needs to work on keeping her emotions in check um, and other stuff because of how our relationship is going. And any advice, any words that I give my girl, my girl takes it as an insult. She don't wanna hear it, she reject it. As soon as I give constructive criticism, she attacking me, which anybody can criticize me, I'ma take it and build off of it, that's constructive criticism. But with my girl, you know, any other man can say anything um, she would take heed to it. But if it's coming from me, it's, a, it's an attack. It's an insult. You know, she can take advice and criticism from any and everybody except me. Which I could have told her easily, you know, you need to work on keeping your emotions in check. Which the eater might not wrong, but it's how my girl handles the situation. You know, good advice can come from anybody, but don't reject good advice when it comes from particular individuals. Rather, it's somebody you're in a relationship with or somebody um, you got bad blood with. You know, good advice can come from anywhere. You know, don't reject it when it comes. So that's what I thought about, you know, our women on these jobs, <clears throat> whatever the serpent take to them, Hey, the women take heed to it. They honor the words of the serpent, but they don't take heed to 
or honor the word of their own man, the man that they living with, the man that's supposed to love them and care for them and, and protect them. But they take the words of the serpent, you know, and if my girl was wise, she would have said, hey, my manager told me I need to work on keeping my emotions in check at work. You know, maybe I need to apply that elsewhere in life as well, such as at home, you know, dealing with friends and family. But um, wisdom wasn't imparted to our women for the most part. But that's what I wanted to bring out, you know, women to take heed to the word of the serpent, but reject the words of their own man. Okay, that's cool. You can reject the words of your man, but don't reject the words of your man when he's telling you the words of the Heavenly Father. That's where it gets daily. You know, earthly matters, you ain't got to listen to me or any other man all you want. You can reject all our words on earthly matters, but on spiritual things, the words of the Heavenly Father, that's where it gets daily. And now I'm going to go to the book of Proverbs <clears throat> chapter 1 verse 22 how long you simple ones will you love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge and what's that knowledge the words of the heavenly father turn you in my reproof reproof is correction behold i will pour out my spirit unto you i will make known my words unto you how's the heavenly father gonna make his words known unto the people uh through his men the service the prophets yeah so esau edom he can correct our women like, hey, you got potential. And when Esau tell you that you got potential, pretty much he pretty much saying you're not good enough. The white man can straight up tell our women, you're not good enough. You need to work on this, this and that and come back and see me later. But if we as Israelite men who represent Adam say that to our women, it's going to be World War Four. You know, the house going to get burned down. We're going to have to move out. We're going to end up in jail. The police going to get called if we speak them same words to our women. Well, even when we bring reproof of the Heavenly Father, according to Scripture, hey, that's going to cause a world war. Hey, but when Esau bring his reproof to serpent, the women take heed to it. Verse 24, this is the Heavenly Father speaking. Because I have called and you refuse. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Also for the women. How is the Lord calling to you through his men, his servants, the prophets? But you have said at naught all my counsel, meaning what? You may avoid the words of the heavenly father. You rejected the words of the heavenly father. You heard them and did nothing with them and would none of my reproof. Meaning what? You didn't turn at the words of the heavenly father. You completely rejected them. And how do you reject the words of the heavenly father? You reject the words when they spoken through his servants, the prophets. And when Esau, the serpent, when he speaks to our women, criticize them, reproves them, rebuke them, uh, the women uh, take heed to it. Why? Because, oh, that's a serpent. He's on a certain level. You know, that that serpent can elevate me and I could be like the serpent if I take his advice. But they generally don't want to take the, the advice of an Israelite man. Why? Because we're usually on a lower level. And a lower level in this world, in this society. But that's why when we come to the book of Judges 10 and 13, yeah, ye have forsaken me and served other gods. So yeah, when you reject the words of the Heavenly Father, Regardless from who they go through, from who they come through, you reject the heavenly father. You reject the whole chain of command. That's why the Lord said, if they despise, roughly paraphrasing, if you despise my word, you don't despise that man, but you despise the heavenly father. So yeah, yeah, you have forsaken me and served other gods. So whoever word that you take heed to, doing the words that you honor, that's who you make your God. And our women, when you take heed to the words of the serpent, who is Esau, Edom, the white man, you make him your God. So when the serpent tell you, if you work on this and do this to that, you can be on a certain level. You can move up in a company. Now you think you done moved up in the world and you above your man. You done made Esau your God. Because what go on at work should have no place in your home. So again, 
yet ye have forsaken me and serve other gods. And who is this other god that most of our people are serving? Esau eat on the white man. Wherefore, I will deliver you no more. So our people um, are going to be destroyed if they don't turn back from that. That's idol worship. Go and cry unto the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. So this don't mean you worshiping dragons and mermaids and strange creatures. You worship him whose words that you take heed to. And <laughs> who was the guys that our people worshiping? Esau, Edom, the serpent. What did Adam and Eve do in Genesis, the third chapter? They worshiped the serpent. That was idol worship. That was, the, you know, right there. Same thing today. And when we go to the book of Galatians 1 and 10, for do I not persuade men or Yahweh, or do I seek to please men? No, we seek to please Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. For yet, if I please men, I should not be the servant of Hamashiach. So yeah, if you take heed to the words of a man, um, any man who's not bringing you the words of the Heavenly Father, well, you're not going to be a servant of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. And we know the Lord said, because you reject the knowledge, I will reject you and your children. So, yeah, you're going to be rejected. And how is that going to play out, that rejection? Well, in this generation, well, all the time, the rejection of the Lord plays out by you dying. And that's you dying in this generation by the sword, famine, pestilence, or the nuclear destruction. So, yeah, we seek to please the Heavenly Father by what? Taking heed to his word. The words of anybody else is not going to come between the words of us as individuals and the Heavenly Father. And our women, you men too. When you live by the word of the serpent, to be on a certain level, to get a certain level of wisdom, to think that it's making you better, and you reject the words of the Heavenly Father, the Lord is going to reject you because you're seeking to please the serpent. In Isaiah 30 and 1, Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. And who do our people take counsel from? They take counsel from the serpent. Like I told you, I told my girl some of the same things, the same thing that her manager told her. You need to work on keeping your emotions in check, and you need to stop breaking under pressure. You need to stop acting like a child and shutting down when things don't go your way. Be an adult, be a woman, and deal with it. Don't run away, then come back to it later. You should never run for your problems. That's pretty much what I told her plenty of times. And it caused many arguments. But when a serpent told it to her, you know, she took heed to it. Not only does she reject my, my earthly advice, she rejects spiritual advice when I bring it according to scripture. And many other women do. They reject the words of the Lord that come through different men that they may come across. But that's why the Lord said they take counsel, but not of me. And that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. That they may add sin to sin. So the more that you reject the counsel, the words of the Heavenly Father, and take heed to the words of the serpent, or those that's kicking to you, earthly knowledge, earthly advice, you add in sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked in my mouth. Who was the Lord's mouth? His servants, the prophets. That's why it says that walk to go down into Egypt. When you walk to get advice from your serpent or any of these other Americans, you walking down, you downgraded. You got the highest form of advice, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding by the servants, the prophets the men of your own nation, but you walk down, you downgrade, you go down into the basement to get the words from the serpent, to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, build yourself up in this society, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt, this government. Therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and your trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. So yeah, you're trying to strengthen your alliance with the serpent, build yourself up, to make yourself a, be a better ally to the serpent. You trusting in the serpent. That's going to contribute to your shame. And that's why when we come to the book of Proverbs 1 and 28, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. And they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. 
for they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord because they didn't have the fear of the Lord. They rejected the words of the Lord that came through the servants, the prophets, the different men. And why do you reject the words of the heavenly father when they come through the servants, the prophets? Because you don't perceive these men to be prophets. You look at these men. Oh, that's my cousin. Oh, that's my boyfriend. We're not doing good with him. We're not doing good right now. Oh, that's my cousin. Or we look like somebody else that you had a bad experience with in your past. Or we, we remind you of somebody else. Or you just don't see us being on a certain level because we're on a low level in this society. That's why Yahweh Shah said a prophet is without honor. Is not without honor except in its own country. And what they say to Yahweh Shah, is that not is that not the carpenter's son? Is that not Mary's son is that not the brother of James, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's how people look at us. You just my cousin. You just my boyfriend. You just an employee at Walmart. What do you know? Well, because of how we look, they reject the words of the heavenly Father. You know, they don't try the words, and a lot of our people they know it makes sense, but they hate knowledge. Well, guess what? Hey, when they need the Lord, hey, the Lord's gonna reject the call. <clears throat> 30 they would none of my counsel they despised all my reproof so any advice spiritual advice spiritual constructive criticism the words of the heavenly father that we bring um they despise it and i know me um long as we talking uh worldly knowledge earthly matters you know it's all good hey, as soon as i start bringing up scripture you know it's an issue which i, I learned and grew you know, I stopped doing that over a year and a half ago. You know, I just don't bring up any scripture around certain individuals. Therefore, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way? Yeah. And what was that fruit of their own way? Whatever thought, whatever false information that they fed themselves. And what's that false information? The fruit, the food for thought that the serpent is kicking to our people. You get certain degrees, certain level of edif edif uh, 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 education, uh, certifications, you know, you'll be on a higher level. You don't need your man. Or you could be on a level so high, you could be as God's. You could be as wise as God. You could be um, in control of your own life and be filled with their own devices. So whatever you believe in, whatever you be deceived by, the Lord going to give you over to that. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them. Turning away from what? The words of the heavenly father. That's going to slay you. And the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. And that woman, she divorced her husband because she thought she was above him. And that what? That destroyed her relationship. Well, you women that's prospering in your madness with the serpent, that's going to destroy your relationship with you and the man of the Lord that you got. And that's going to destroy your relationship with the Heavenly Father because you rejected the man that the Lord placed in your life. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall do it safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. And men do this too. They reject the words of the Heavenly Father. You know, they cleave to the word of the serpent. Well, they're going to be rejected as well. And our last precept we're going to get is first Timothy 5 and 6. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. So in your prosperity, your madness with the serpent, your love relationship with the serpent, taking pleasure in the words of the serpent, pleasure in our righteousness, no matter how high you climb in this society, you dead while you live. You a dead woman walking. You a dead woman talking. So you dooms, a same as you men. You know, you in pleasure while you live, because you ally with the serpent, you dead while you live as well. And that's a feminine trait when you cleave to the word of the serpent, trying to X out your master. You have a bash and you have a shot. You're going to be destroyed. So, yep, Lord, wouldn't that was edifying and, and, you know, for the elect and spiritual. And until next time, Shalom.